What's going on guys? So we're doing the uh, gear, rear dip gear on the spicy pumpkin. <laughs> it's not ah, spicy pumpkin. Now it's called the spicy pumpkin. So uh, we're going from a 410 to a 373. Since the car is making just about double the power now, it just goes straight to the limiter. So on run up for initiation, stuff like that, the car just wants to spin the wheels loose. Uh, so figured we'll, uh, you know, get a video out of it. And if somebody's doing, because this is a really popular diff, the 8.8 out of Fords, it's a really popular diff. So figured probably a lot of people, you know, change their diff. It's it's broken or changing their their gearing. So might as well uh, do somewhat of a how-to. So we'll go through some of the stuff that, that we're doing here and uh, give you an idea of what you need to do if you're doing a similar drop. So we already got the cover off. So you pretty much have to take your wheels off, your calipers off, uh, because it's all axle, so you gotta slide the axle right out of it. So that's kind of what we're doing right now. Once we get everything disassembled, I'll go through some more of the stuff that we did and what we're gonna do. All right, so we got the caliper off and the rotor and uh, you slide the, the pins that are in there and so you can slide the axle out far enough and there's a pin with a bolt in it. Where is it? Right here. So this pin gets this bolt through it and that holds the mini spool part in there. And then this holds the axle in place to not come out so we just gotta do the other side and uh we gotta take the drive shaft out of the back get that bolt loose and then pretty much you can take these guys off that hold the carrier bearings in and the diff comes out so all right so we got the uh other side off got the carrier bearing what do you call this the carrier caps or carrier yeah. caps off yeah whatever now you just pry it right out of there uh, this is the spool the mini spool that i use it's chipped on this side from too much power this thing will focus there you go so we might have to find a different diff and weld it, but if not, we'll just set it as is. So we gotta do some prying to get that thing out of there. Yeah, I really don't want to let go. But it just means it's tight. <laughs> All right, got the dry shaft out of there, and now you just gotta take the uh, the big nut, and then uh, you can just slide the pinion right out we got the pinion out of there the big nut goes here you just hit it a couple times it comes out this is the crush sleeve um, you want to get a new one of these if you're doing this job because these are a one-time use and then we'll have to figure out if we can get this bearing off of here and put it on the new one or have to get a new bearing but yeah, this is the 410, and we've got the 373 right here. So, yep, it's all good to go. Now we just have to figure out what parts we have, what parts we need to get, and uh, go from there. So, did actually find the little chunks of the mini spool that came off, but. I think I'm just gonna put it back in and send it. These are just extra chunks that are uh, used, so. Those are the extra pieces. We don't need don't those where people. we're going. You don't tell people about the extra pieces. Got the new pinion with the uh, spring on it. Gotta remember there's a shim under there. You gotta get off the uh, old, old one or get the right size that you need to set the right lash. Um, and then you gotta, you can't reuse this guy, so you get brand new ones. Um, we're gonna have to figure something out as far as this goes, cause these guys 
I said earlier that it was broken. These guys right here are broken. All right, you can see here, it's not just broken, the whole thing is actually cracked throughout here. Um, even this one was getting ready to break off. Um, this one's cracked across, so you can't reuse these. So we might grab another 8-8 um, um, carrier. At least if we can get the uh, spider uh, gears, it needs to be a 31 spline because I use a, a 31 spline gear. So once we get that figured out, I think I have something lined up from a local guy. I'm just welded on and good to go. So and now we're reinstalling the pinion in. Once you get that on, you have to tighten it until it crushes the this washer right here. And then there is like a, a set load that you have to do with the inch, inch pound, but we just gotta, you know, tighten it until it feels pretty tight. It's a race car, it's not a road car that really is gonna drive miles and miles. So we just get it close enough and go from there. But if you're doing it and it's on a street car, you can do with the inch pound torque wrench. So. Yeah, I'll show you how to check the the lash in a little bit once we do figure out the uh, the spider gears. So we got the pinion in there. It takes a lot to tighten this nut. This is kind of like an oval nut style. Um, and then you want to set your preload to uh, I believe what was it, 16, 16 inch pound between 16 and 28 pound inch inch pound if it's brand new bearing and then it's 8 to 14 if it's a used bearing so you just kind of keep tightening it crushing the, uh, the crush sleeve we actually did have the the pound inch uh, torque wrench to be act to be able to actually check it so I'll go ahead and uh, show you guys what Bob's doing so we're looking down. for 16 to 28 inch pounds, so that's two foot pound, so I'm there. So they're looking for, you pretty much almost have to have one of these old school finger style torque wrenches. But if you watch the top, if we just watch the bottom scale, I know it starts out at two foot pound there, but if we watch that, it should jump to about four foot pound as I start to roll with it. And it's really hard for you guys to see on camera, so you're just gonna have to take my word for it. But yeah. it actually does feel somewhat unnatural because this doesn't just roll freely. Yeah, it's it's gotta be a little tight. So. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that's yeah. That's that's actual preload because as the bearing rolls in, it's just gonna get softer. Yeah. So it's actually like it feels tight to turn, which is what you want. That way it's not in there just slapping around, so. Um, yeah, once we figure out uh, the spider gears, gears and then uh, we can put it back together. So these, uh, this mini spool is damaged pretty heavily. So we try to find like a Cobra carrier that has a 31 spline, because I use 31 spline axles because of the um, dual caliper setup that we have to use for drifting. So I couldn't find one, I thought I did. So I'm trying to show you here. So as you can see here, this guy's cracked on the side. This guy is cracked really bad actually. This one is broken. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and clean these up since I couldn't find uh, 31 spine spider gears and carrier. So we're gonna go ahead and clean all these cracks, 
clean all where it's broken off. Um, then we're gonna weld them up right here, kind of remake it, and then we're gonna actually put it in the axles and weld these little blocks in here. That way they can't do this. And that's pretty much what caused it in the first place, all this play. So we're gonna get rid of all the play. And then once it's in there, we're actually gonna weld it onto the carrier itself right here so they cannot move at all. So we're gonna go ahead and weld it and uh, hopefully we can still put the axles in and out of there. All right. So we ended up welding the uh, top side of the spool so that way the bottom can still come out and we can drop the pin and take the axles out. Um, so if your spool ever cracks, this is the fix. <laughs> uh, so now it's pretty tight. Uh, usually you want to set the side to side lash with all the uh, spacers here. I think it's like 9 to 12 thou. You set up the dial on here and um, there's like a whole procedure to it, but we're pretty tight where we're at now. So we're good to go. I'm gonna wrap it up, start putting everything back together, and uh, send a Roni. Alright, got it all sealed up. Wheels back on. The Panhard's back on. If you uh, end up getting the whole kit, you do. They do give you the yellow paint that you can put on the the ring gear, so you can check the pattern on the top and the bottom for engagement. You want it to be <clears throat> not too close to the edge on the inside edge, and not too much out to the outside edge. If it's too close in, it's gonna uh, make a whining noise if it's t too far out uh, You're risk breaking one of the gears on the ring gear. So we didn't buy the whole kit. So we ended up just using ARP Fastener loop right here So it's one of the tricks I guess uh, Bob knows uh, Pretty much anything that you can schmoo on that gear. <laughs> yeah, and it'll show you the contact patch. It'll, it'll, it'll go Yeah um, If you're you know doing it for the first time you might have to shim it to get that clearance because that's really what's gonna give you the really nice pattern um so yeah this is it we wrapped it up just gotta put some gear oil in it in a little bit and uh just gotta put the drive shaft back on and yeah it's feeling pretty tight so now it's so much better it, it used to be turn. pretty loose that's why the the mini um yeah. yeah, that's why the mini spool kind of broke because I had so much slack in it. Um, but yeah, this is it for for this one. I hope you know it helps somebody out. If not, it was a cool video to make. And if you've done this job before and you have some stuff to add on, go ahead and add it in the comment section. Um, if you did something pretty stupid, then let me know. <laughs> uh, it's kind of the motto here is just sending it. So. Yeah, hopefully uh, next time uh, we're on the dyno and uh, we see what this thing can do on the current setup before we go coil on plug. So, uh, yeah, this is it. See you in the next one. One thing I want to mention is that I'm going to add some of the links that I use for um, some of the technical information um, for the diff, like the lash and everything that you need to do and how to set <clears throat> the, the pinion. Um, the the torque that it, it needs so i'll insert the link in the description for that um that way it's easy for you guys to just click it and it's actually a full um uh, installation instruction so you can pretty much just follow that and uh, it'll be pretty easy to do this job so